So you've probably seen a website kind of like this before and um, you'll probably have the same reaction that I did. You kind of roll your eyes, feel a little confused for half a second, and then move on as quickly as possible because it's really uncomfortable to look at. There's so much going on. You don't have any idea where to focus your eyes or where to start reading. Hopefully there's nothing important because really all you're going to do is click next and go on to something that looks a whole lot better. So I have good news for you. I can teach you four really basic design principles that will immediately make the things that you put together not look like this. They will immediately look a lot better. So the very first one is proximity. The principle of proximity states that related items should be grouped together. So this is a visual example of that. These items have been grouped together. They're not just free floating on the page. Alignment means that, uh, or the principle of alignment states that every item should have a visual connection with something else on the page. There's lots of visual connections here. These items have been lined up and aligned. These connect across the top and aligned down. Plenty of alignment going on. Contrast. The principle of contrast states that if you have two items that are not exactly the same, then make them different. Make them stand out from one another. Contrast is the degree of difference between two elements. Using these four principles, and yeah, there are a couple like little rules that fall under them, but these are the main four things. You could put together a website that looks like something like this. I looked up some well-designed but fairly simple websites. These have some things going on for them. For example, the proximity rule. This information has been grouped together. It has also been right aligned which creates a very obvious line running down that information to connect it. This site has a whole lot of contrast going on. There's a big difference between the background red items and the foreground and the current item is also highlighted in red so it pulls your eye even more. The more contrast something it has the more it will pull your eye to it. So those are just a couple of examples. In this tutorial we're going to be working with a business card file that has been provided for you. It is a Photoshop file and right now it looks really big on my screen but if we go into image menu and image size, you'll notice that this is actually three and a half inches wide by two inches tall at 300 dpi or ppi pixels per inch and that is standard US business card size. So if we hit OK, pull up your tools, I had mine turned off with my tab key, grab your zoom tool and then right click or control click out on the canvas and choose print size. Now on my screen it's actually pretty close to true print size. If you want to make sure or be aware of the difference your screen might have to print size, grab a ruler and when you're here at print size just hold it up and that'll give you kind of an idea of how maybe off your screen might be from true print size. I'm only showing you this because when creating a business card it's really easy to forget that you're working on something that is really tiny. It's not huge. It doesn't actually encompass the space the size of your screen. But for now it will. We're going to zoom in and take a look at exactly what's going on. To sum up in just a phrase, the key to good design is visual organization or introducing a visual hierarchy. And those three principles that we just went over are what we'll use today to introduce that visual organization. So the way you can look at a layout of anything really and decide if it's a good layout and effective is to ask these three questions. Does it tell the reader where to start reading? Do you know what to look at next? And when do you stop? Let's apply those to this one. Well, where do we start reading? What catches your eye first on this layout? Should be this big word in the middle, centrifuge. That's because it has the most contrast. It is the most different from all of the other pieces on this layout. Each one of these pieces is a single place that your eye stops as you look at this. That makes each one of those a single element. 
So you'll hear me refer to elements a lot. That's what I'm talking about. When we look around the page, how many times does your eye stop? Now, after looking at the first big word that has the most contrast, what do we look at next? Well, the rest of the stuff is pretty much the same. So if you're Western culture, like I am, you'll immediately go to the upper left-hand corner because we are just trained to start reading in the top left and work our way to the right and then down. So I'd read the name and then read this. Then you might read this one or that one, or if you're reading in clockwise motion, you'll go around this way. But the fact of the matter is it's not very clear. When you don't make things clear where to start, it can kind of frustrate your viewer, like uh, our tolerable layout example. Where the heck do you start with that? Um, so we need to start by grouping things together so that we know where to look at next. We've begun by already having something that is dominant to all the other pieces. So the item that is most noticeable and the one that your eye goes to first should be the most important thing on the layout and it's also referred to as the dominant element. And that's this word right here. Let's move this up just a little bit. So for that proximity principle, we should group things that go together. So I would say this is the name of the company, so this name, Samson Wold, would go next because that's usually the next important thing you look at on a business card and then who exactly he is in relation to that company. So that's kind of one group right there. Next I would say the contact information. So here we go, we've got our website and a phone number. Now that we've grouped these two different pieces together, we now actually have two elements going on. If you blur your eyes just a little bit, there's a big element here and there's a smaller element here. That makes it easier to read. For starters, centrifuge catches our eye right off and we immediately read from there, Samson Mold, Vice President. Then we move to the next element, which is not as dominant on the page and it has the next bit of information. That's proximity in a really, really small nutshell and we'll be looking at some more examples over the next few lessons.